Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we're going to head down to the Scottish Borders, which is of course home to one of Scotland's best craft breweries these days. So we're going to return to Tempest Brewing Company for review number 7 or 8, I think it is, that I've done from these guys. And we've got one of their seasonal beers to have a look at today. So this one is called In the Dark We Live. It's a black IPA and it comes in at 7.2%. It's very highly rated actually. According to Rate Beer, this one has a 99 overall and within the style. It was rated well into the four stars on Untapped when I checked it out, and uh, I think on out on Beer Advocate as well it had an outstanding rating. So it should be a pretty damn good beer. I've had some really good black IPAs recently, Black Hops, for example, from uh, Beer Here over in Denmark. So I'm really interested to see how this one turns out. And according to uh, to Rate Beer, actually this is one of the top 50 black IPAs in the world just now. So it should be a really good one. And I'm always interested to try these new beers from Tempest because they do some pretty damn good stuff. So as always, I hope hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery quickly. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Tempest before. No doubt there will be some more in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Tempest Brewing Company then so Tempest Brewery was founded back in 2010 by Gavin and Anika Miko John and Anika had actually trained as a chef in New Zealand but the couple decided to return to Scotland in 2007 to run the Cobbles Bar down in Kelso in the Scottish Borders region. So Gavin had previously worked for the Whistler Brewing Company in British Columbia over in Canada so he had a real appreciation for craft beer and he'd also taken some brewing courses when the couple were living in Sydney and Australia and he home brewed in his garage in Wellington in New Zealand with a small 50 litre brewery. Wellington of course is pretty much the craft beer capital of New Zealand. There's some awesome, awesome beers come out of there so if you get the chance to visit Wellington I really recommend that you do. There's some great places to go down there. But Gavin's joined at the brewery by Alan Rice who acts as the business development manager and he previously worked for Stuart Brewery in Edinburgh who also do some really nice IPAs and things like this but the brewery was previously housed in some old dairy buildings in Kelso and this brewery was largely homemade and engineered to produce big beers on a shoestring budget however the beers proved to be really popular and then they had to actually build their own brewery and they are well they had to kind of move and reconstruct their own brewer if you like and they're now based in the Tweed Bank Industrial Estate in Gala Shields actually so a lot of interesting things with this brewery they're constantly working to expand their capacity and they're always experimenting and it is quite cool to see uh, this brewery have built up a really good reputation for themselves I'm not sure how widely available their beers are outside of Scotland uh, I know I have I did pick up this one in England actually I got this in Durham Wines but I'm not sure how widely available they are in places like Ireland and mainland Europe and things like that and I have I have actually seen Mexicake in Denmark as well but other than that I'm not sure if they go over to North America or anything like this but Tempest Brewery in terms of capability if you like in terms of the standard of their beers these guys really should be exporting a little bit more than they do I think because the beers they produce are pretty good in my experience so if you get the chance to try some of the Tempest beers these are some of the best ones that you're going to find in Scotland so yeah that's all you need to know about the brewery just now let's actually get on to the tasting of the beer itself as I always say the link to the brewery website is in the description below for you to have a little look at so yeah I'll just let you, a little, let you have a little brief brief look at the uh, artwork on this one before we open up. All the Tempest beers by the way have a very similar style of artwork just slightly different colours. The seasonal beers and the one-offs do tend to have different things like Alligator Man and uh, Mexicake and things like this. I do need to try Alligator Man at some point in the future. There you can see the Tempest bottle cap. I'm just watching on the little camera control that I've got down here and uh, yeah, so basically the same. The the stats on this beer itself, so this one is hot with Mosaic, Columbus and Simcoe and it's got Golden Promise, Munich and Carafa malts in the malt base. So it should be a really nice beer. Like I said, 7.2% black IPA. Let's get it out and see how we get on. Yep, nice little bit of smoky opening and we'll get it out then. i tell you something, you can smell the Simcoe in this right away. That passion fruit just kind of jumps out at you. It's always nice to film a beer review in the morning actually before you actually do anything. Starts off your day nicely. But yeah, as you can see, and i tell you something, the fruit really does jump out at 
out of this at you after a little while you can start to smell the tangerines from the mosaic now as well but as you can see and as you would expect from a black IPA it's poured a really nice dark sort of ebony rosewood colour there's a solid three quarter two thirds finger of a I'd say sort of beigey, slightly tan head on this one, really nice. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But overall, you know, it looks pretty nice and the, the fruity aroma that I'm getting off this one is cracking. You can really get some of these lovely hops out of it. So let's take a closer look at that then and see how we get on. That smells pretty damn awesome, I have to say. So yeah. With this one, you can really smell the black backbone to it, that black malty backbone. It's almost a little bit dusty, if that makes sense, but you can smell a little bit of chocolate in there, but definitely some roasted black malts as well. A bit of the brown sugars coming out as well. You could, I think that would be the carafe malt, if I'm remembering correctly. But yeah, definitely some a little bit of brown sugar in there, but really a roasty, toasty black malt backbone to it. You can smell a little bit of that lighter bready note. The Munich malt, of course, gives you that sort of white bready quality that you expect in a Hellas and a Dunkel. And you can really pick up just a little bit of that kind of distinctive German bready character to it, which is lovely, actually. It's not some, I don't think I've actually come across a black IPA where they've used uh, just Munich malt in it. It's usually the likes of uh, Carapils or something like that. They do it just to give it a little bit more sweetness, a little bit of caramel. So that's quite an interesting note with this one. We'll see how we get on with the flavour of it. But yeah, the hops on this are really interesting too. You can really get a little bit of that kind of spicy, almost peppery character that you expect of the uh, of the Columbus. It's definitely got that kind of floral, aromatic, almost peppery, spicy note coming out of it. Some juicy fruits as well. A little bit of passion fruit. A little bit of... You know, a little bit of, of uh, the tangerine from the mosaic as well. You can always tell the, the mosaic from the Amarillo because of that. The tangerines are just a little bit lighter and almost juicier, if that makes sense. The Amarillo gives you a more orangey, kind of oily character, if that makes sense. But the Simcoe, the passion fruit in the Simcoe, really jumps out of this as well. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma. There's a wee bit of a sharper citrus note from this one, which I think is probably the Columbus as well. But the aroma on this is really quite interesting. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma before you get stuck into the beer. But let's have a go with this one now. So this one's called In the Dark We Live, Black IP at 7.2% from Tempest Brewing Company down in Gallus Shields in the Scottish Borders. One of the best craft brews in Scotland these days. Let's get stuck in. Slant it. Yeah. That's a pretty damn good black IPA. No doubt in my mind about that. The one thing I've always said about this style, the black IPA can be a really difficult one to get because I have tried many where, you know, they've just... They've got that kind of base malt to it, if you like, then they just put a little bit of kind of black malt or carafe or something on top of it. I think if you just do it in that basic way, it loses a lot of its its kind of appeal, if you like. I think you've always got to have a little bit of kind of caramel or just a few different malt varieties in it to give it a bit of complexity. And usually if it's an imperial black IPA, I think that works reg that works better than the regular black IPA. But with this one, this one's a little bit lighter in alcohol compared to some of the other ones that I've had recently, but it does have that kind of complexity. This is what you want, actually. So, you know, kudos to uh, to Tempest for this one. They've done a great job with it. Because it's light, it's, I suppose it is lighter in the alcohol content than some of the ones you're going to come across but they have got a little bit of that complexity in the malt base which is what I look for. Other people might just prefer it to be straight up in roasty black malt but I do like it to have a little bit of sweetness as well. For me the malt base always has to have a little bit of sweetness to balance out the bitterness in that case and this beer definitely has that so yeah I will say straight up I can see why this beer is quite so highly rated. It's really clean and it just the complexities and stuff that it has in the malt base just give it that little bit extra. So yeah with the malt base then, with this one, you can feel a little bit of that, you know, you can feel that roasty, toasty black malt backbone to it. On top of that, you can feel the nice bready elements as well. It does have a little bit of that white bready character. That'll be the Munich malt giving it that. Yeah, I'll stick with that. The roasty black malt malt base. On top of that, a little bit of that German Munich bready malt. That's a really nice touch, actually. I'd love to try home brewing with some of this Munich malt and just see what it does to the uh, 
to the malt base because that works really really well actually but right in the middle of the tongue once the flavour mellows out a little bit for me I'm getting a little bit of a, a brown sugary note it's almost it's not quite caramel it's maybe more of a, a slightly uh, oily or caramelised biscuit or something like that you can feel that right in the middle of your palate there's definitely a sort of brown sugary presence and as the flavour progresses you can just feel a little bit of that roasty black malt character just pushing its way out that little bit more. It's, it's really interesting just how the flavour evolves in this beer but like I say the main point about it is that it has that kind of complexity that you would want from a black IPA. Quite often they can just be straight up in roasty black bitterness and for me it just doesn't have enough to keep me interested if that makes sense but this one certainly has what I would look for. But yeah that's a really nice beer. The way the malt base goes together really is cracking, actually. In terms of the of the hops, then, in the back corners of the palate, there's a wee touch of earthiness there. That'll be the Columbus. As you come further forward along the sides of the palate, there's some nice floral aromatic notes. There's a little bit of spicy character in there. It's a little bit almost... Uh, Peppery again, that's a kind of property that you expect of the Columbus. Round the front curve of the palate, there's a little bit of a lighter, almost kind of lemongrassy character coming out of the beer, too. And just behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get these nice, juicy, fruity notes that you'd expect. Yeah, the way the fruits go together in this is nice as well, so you can feel. The passion fruit in there, just behind the front curve of the tongue, you'll feel that oily bubble I always talk about. There's a little bit of the passion fruit in there. And later on in the flavour, you start to get the tangerines that you'd expect from the uh, from the mosaic. And there is a little bit more kind of complexity to it than that. You do the, With the mosaic, you do get a little bit more complexity to the hop than that. There's almost a little bit of a sort of very slight kind of berryish fruit quality to it as well. They say on the bottle that you should get some blackberry out of it. And I can almost see that actually. You can I can almost pick up there's a little bit of blackberry to it. But I want to say it's a little bit more of a kind of reddish fruity quality. It's not quite it's almost like a kind of candied fruit if that makes sense. You do get that as you progress further and further through the flavour of this one. But the main point to take away from this beer is that it's, you know, everything just goes together really well. In terms of a black IP, it's got a really nice malt base, which is something I always look for. If it's got a great malt base, it can really make the difference between just being, you know, a standard black IPA and being one that's really good. They've managed to get that, and Tempest have a knack for that because they've done it with a lot of the other darker beers I've tried from them as well. So they've got a really good malt base for this, and I do like the way the hops come out as well. The Mosaic and the Simcoe are really quite interesting ones to put in a black IPA. I don't think I've had a black IPA before that's used mosaic, but it's certainly worked out really well on this one. So the basic message with this, in terms of flavour, they've done a cracking job of this, and to be honest, I wouldn't expect anything less of Tempest. They don't put beers out there if they're not up to scratch, and this is a really, really good one, and I can see why it's so highly rated on the likes of rate beer and things like that, so really glad that I got to try this one. In terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say... This beer's mid-bodied. I've always found with the Tempest beers, they do feel very clean. It must just be the kind of water and things that they're using in the beer. The carbonation does have a little bit of crispness to it. It's got a little bit of an oily feel, this beer. Although, I think overall, I would describe it as being a little bit wetter, if that makes sense. There's a good bit of hoppy, bitter character to it. There's a good balance between the sweetness and the bitterness in the malt base in this one. It does have just a really quality balance. As I say, it starts off a little bit bitter. It mellows out to become a bit more sweet, and then later on, the roasty bitter elements of the, the malt base start to push their way out a little bit more. Good hoppy bitterness, like I was saying, and then some nice juicy fruity character as well. Pardon me. As I'm saying, as I go on with this beer, more of that kind of berryish fruit quality comes out. Maybe even a little touch uh, figgy or something like that. But I can see what they're saying about blackberries as well. It's maybe blackberry sort of figgy character that comes out of this. But overall, it's a really cracking beer, and I'm glad that I got to try this. So if you have a, if you manage to have a go at this one, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you love the likes of black hops from beer here, um, black socks and body malts from Toils, another one that's really pretty good. And um, if you enjoy those kind of beers, this is one that you definitely want to keep an eye out for. So it, as I say, if you want to try some Scottish craft beers, Tempest are a very, very good place to start. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Check out my social media. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. It's been really cool to return to Tempest Brewery for you once again. I always enjoy reviewing their beers. Let me know what your favourite beers are from them as well. Let me know your own thoughts on this one. And let me know some other Scottish craft beers and breweries that I might not have come across yet. So thank you once again for watching. And we'll catch you guys very soon. In the dark we live. 
7.2% black IPA from Tempest Brewing Company down in Gala Shields in the Scottish Borders region. Slanted just now.